Next, I want to bring up somebody who I think is probably one of our best house reps that we have in Ohio. Um, hands down, I think, I think she's fabulous. Um, she is um, a true medical freedom advocate, Jennifer Gross. dedicated when you get here on a Sunday afternoon and you guys are here. Now, I personally feel like it's like a reunion because I know so many of you guys, I, I cannot tell you how much it, it, it really encourages me to see you because you guys are the true patriots. Now, I got an article yesterday and one of my constituents out of Westchester, you know what he calls me? The disruptor. Yeah. <laughs> article yesterday he says but you know what the person asking the questions disrupts so that we move to the right side of freedom and that that is what I'm about that is absolutely what I'm about so I used to be a homeschooler so we're going to talk Webster's 1828 dictionary defines freedom as this I got to read my notes because those of you who know me know that I am so quiet, shy, and withdrawn that I can never think of anything to talk about. I'm kidding. Um, so Webster, he was a Christian, by the way. He defines liberty as freedom from restraint in a general sense and applicable to the body, the will, or the mind. The body is at liberty when not confined. The will or the mind is at liberty when not checked or controlled. A man enjoys liberty when no physical force operates to restrain his actions or volitions. Stand up if you believe that mandates and freedom can exist in the same sentence. They can't, can they? They absolutely cannot. Two of my favorite people in history are Harriet Tubman and Patrick Henry. And each of them in their own way said, give me liberty or give me death. If you had to request an exemption within the last two years, you are this close, dangerously close to losing your freedom. Because the next step after we give you permission to keep your job because you got a shot is you will now get whatever it is they tell you. So don't think that an exemption, you got a little bit of a break. But you know, people will say to me, oh, Jan, it's just a slippery slope. Well, the mask, right? It yeah. went force masking and now force back. Okay, you chose, I'm already hearing this from my lovely trolls. You chose to get the shot, right? You chose it to keep your job. Ohio HB 248 was dropped in April of 2021. The bill is called the Vaccine Choice Anti-Discrimination Act. It covered all vaccines because we know, guys, that there's about 20 mRNA vaccines coming now. Yep. So some people will say, well, the bill was too broad. I get that. But how much freedom is too much freedom for you is what I would say. <laughs> this, this, bill, this bill was the best medical freedom bill in its sub form. The original bill needed some work, so the sub bill is superior to the original bill. The bill received 1,350 Ohioan proponents. There were 100 proponents whose, whose files were rejected by the chair. We had 1,500 Ohioans come and take the day off, take three hours, drive up, ride in, and testify. But your house didn't hear you. 1,500. That's a lot of Ohioans, that's a lot of hours, that's a lot of time. And that was the beginning for me, a freshman, to see what is going on. And my friend, George, talked about that, right? Shortly after I gave testimony in the Ohio Health Committee, OSHA, three weeks later, changed the requirements for what a reportable safety event looks like. 
if you have lost work time, 12 hours, 48 hours, 24 hours after the shot, at that point, it would have been a recordable safety event if your employer required you to get the shot. But three weeks after I gave testimony, OSHA changed that requirement. Now, I'm a freshman, so I'm still thinking, you know, what am I? I'm just, I'm just a freshman. I'm just Jennifer Gross, and those of you who know me know that I don't, you know, I, I, I'm just like you are. I'm someone who decided to run. I was chosen by two very conservative women who said, I want you to consider running for office, and I probably essentially said, oh, no, thank you, but thank you. I want to talk to you, though, about your Ohio Constitution. The Ohio Constitution, this is what one of them looks like. This is not my favorite copy. I have another one that's organized better, but you can get these for $10.95 on Amazon, if you use Amazon. But the inalienable rights addressed in the Ohio Constitution, Article 1, Section 1. You've got to be educated. You've got to know the Constitution. It says, our Ohio Constitution says this, all men are by nature free and independent and have certain inalienable rights, among which are those of enjoying and defending life, liberty, acquiring and possessing, protect, protecting property, and seeking and obtaining happiness and safety. If you choose to get a vaccine, that is your choice. I was part of Operation Warp Speed. I have changed a lot. I am not an anti-vaxxer. I never was. But if you look me up in the media, they have labeled me as such. Now, I've changed. But I will tell you that if safety for you means getting a shot, then that's your choice. If safety means not getting a shot and not being coerced to get a shot, that is also your choice. The rights of conscience. in the Ohio Constitution, again, you must know your Constitution and know your rights, says, and this isn't, I'm taking this out for just brevity. The rights of conscience are addressed in the Ohio Constitution as well in Article 1, Section 7, which states, no preference shall be given by law to any religious society, nor shall any interference of the rights of conscience be permitted. Fighting. And I, I just got a message. I, I'm going to add this, so I'll be a little disjointed here. But we have to keep fighting. And do you know how I know? Many of you know that I'm what they call a combat veteran. That means that I served in a combat zone because I was a nurse. I didn't use my Second Amendment to haul off and shoot people. But I was expert qualified in the 9mm and the 38. <laughs> but, but on a serious note, my fellow veterans are dead. They are dead in Section 60 of Arlington. If we do not stand for the freedoms that we have in Ohio, who's going to do that? And if we do not stand, then they died in vain. And I'm telling you, not on my watch. Not on my watch. So we press on, right? We, your legislature, and that includes me, have not protected your comprehensive freedom. Notice I didn't say give you freedom. You already have it. And people in Ohio citizens, such as a young woman named Diana Smith, yes, that's her name, she just stepped up and said, well, your legislature's not doing it, I'm going to do something called the HB 248 ballot initiative. So four times, four times, they got 2,000 signatures to try to get this initiative on the ballot, and four times, your executive branch, Attorney General Yost, denied you the opportunity to even vote on it. That was almost 8,000 Ohioans. I can't tell you they were all different, but let's just say it was the 1,500 plus the 8,000. Now we're getting to 10,000 Ohioans who cared enough to say, this matters to me, right? So it was rejected. And let me tell you about this little boy. It was people, by the way, Ohio Advocates for Medical Freedom. They are the strongest medical freedom group in the state. I encourage you to look them up. I just got a text today. This boy lives in uh, Candidate Renacy's district. His name is Tanner. The Cleveland Clinic has denied Tanner. He's a nine-year-old boy in renal failure. His father is available and a match to give him a kidney. 
The Cleveland Clinic has now denied Tanner a kidney because his father is not vaccinated. Wow. If HB 248 had been passed, the discrimination that is occurring, and it's still occurring, don't think it stopped. It's just that many people were coerced and they acquiesced to the pressure or they quit their jobs. But guys, please, the discharge petition still exists. They'll tell you, oh, I didn't follow the process, the process, the process. I don't know about you, but is freedom a process? But if were you born with freedom because you're an American? I want you to remember Tanner. We need that bill. But before I finish up, I want to talk to you about something else. How am I doing on time? Three minutes, okay. We have the Save Women Sports Act, HB 61 in Ohio. That bill is a bill from Jenna Powell. And again, it requires schools, state institutions of higher education, private colleges to designate separate single-sex sports teams, which, hold on, would protect women's ability to compete against biological women in sports. We need to pass this legislation to protect women's sports in Ohio. that she didn't follow the process. Are you, are you hearing that? I didn't follow the process. HB 248 didn't follow the process. They're doing the same right now with 327 and Sarah Fowler Arthur and our CRT bill. They didn't follow the process. When you hear that, that is speak for I'm not going to pass it. You have to learn. These are a lot of things that I've learned. The time in history, this time in history is a great lesson for us all, all of us. There are many things that we learned from President Trump. But one thing he showed us is who we are. Right? He showed us our power. Don't ever think that I'm the strongest one, that my strength comes, but because my strength comes from the Lord. And I live with a scripture that says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Please don't ever forget that. Your government representatives, if they're not heated hearing you and they're not meeting with you, I have a town hall every single month. I do a newsletter every single month. If they're not meeting with you and they're not responding with you, who is the term limiter? You are. Yes. Vote them out. Remember that only approximately 30% of all Americans rose up during the Revolutionary War, and I'm not saying to take up arms yet. <laughs> But 30% of Americans rose up to fight for liberty and freedom while 70% of the rest of the colonists were willing to sit and drink expensive tea and pay high taxes. That's my version. I'm sure my building blocks for liberty people will set me straight. They trained me, by the way. No. Um, so I'm here to link arms with you. I'm also here to show you that not every legislator is a rhino. And and that together we're stronger. We have to link arms. Everything you've heard from, from George and um, Mr. Bainbridge and our central committee, all the things that you have heard today are true. I've seen it with my own eyes, and I'm still naive enough to believe that liberty and freedom are first and foremost for all Ohioans. All Ohioans. So... I'm going to end with this. Thomas Jefferson said, Our liberty can never be safe, but in the hands of the people themselves. So God bless you guys. God bless this state. I thank you so much for the time.